I love how spirited of a bunch we are. This is great. <laughs> Welcome to Union Congregational Church, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here, whether in person in these pews or online, whether today or throughout the week. I am so excited to be with you today. This is my first Sunday as your pastor, uh, and I am so, so excited. And this is the first Sunday of Advent. Um, so this is just a really, um, a really wonderful, exciting uh, Sunday on a number of fronts. Um, so I would like to actually start out today with announcements rather than um, rather than doing them at the end, um, we do have confirmation um, after um, after service today, um, and I'm looking forward to that. Um, but um, what other announcements uh, need to be shared today? Got something? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good, good morning. Um, our parish was so excited to welcome Jacob that we created a little basket in the back. If you'd like to add something to it, we will present him with this welcome basket after church this morning. Thank you. Heather. Good morning and welcome everybody. Um, I... I'm sure some of you noticed there's a tree hanging in the fellowship hall with lots of tags on it. Our giving tree is up. We added the last of the student tags to the tree this morning. Um, on the tree, there are needs and wants of the children of Wapan and the surrounding community um, to help their families at Christmas this year. If you're able and willing, we invite you to take a tag or two um, and then return the wrapped gifts with the tag attached to the outside of the package. Um, by December 11th, so those can be sorted and distributed to the kids before their break. Um, see, what else was I going to say about the giving tree? Um, 
I think that's it with the giving tree. And then we will be having a special Advent program the first Sunday of December, which happens to be next week. We will be having practice for the children on this Saturday at 930 um, as a walkthrough of the rehearsal. And then it will be at nine o'clock. Is that time correct? On the first Sunday, nine o'clock on December 4th. And we invite you to join us. Thank you. And uh, that Sunday, we'll also be celebrating um, Holy Communion. Uh, so um, we are really excited to share in in that uh, ritual uh, for the for the first time as as us together. Any other announcements today? In that case, uh, let us uh, prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Uh, please join me in the the call to worship. So I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the giver of hope. We come today with eager expectation. Our feet are standing within God's gates. Come, let us go up to the mountain that the giver may teach us the way of peace. We come today with holy expectation. Our hands are lifted with grateful praise. We gather at the edge of the throne of justice. Come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Please join me in the unison opening prayer. God of the faith that the bleak past has taught us. God of the hope that the present has brought us. We call on you in this hour of worship. We know that you need no invocation for you are always and already with us, Emmanuel, even before the child was born. We open our hearts to receive your gifts, the giver of peace, the giver of joy, the giver of love. Make your presence known as we make ourselves available to you. Amen. Our opening hymn will be uh, number 153, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Please rise if it's comfortable for you to do so and join us in singing. <laughs> So now it is time to uh, light the advent, the first advent candle of the season. Um, I'd like to invite Tiffany and Ainsley to come forward and 
uh, do that with us. Here are the readings. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Today is the beginning of Advent, a preparation time for celebrating Christ's birth. We are here because God's promises to our ancestors came true when Jesus was born. God's promise is kept, kept each Sunday when we worship Christ because Christ is in our midst. God will keep the promise to come again in glory. Though, though the darkness covers the earth and gloom the nations, the Lord will shine upon you. God's glory will appear over you. We light this candle to proclaim the coming of the light of God into the world. With the coming of this light, there is hope. Because, because of Christ, we not only have hope, but we have but we believe that God is stronger than evil. God wants us to work for good in this world. Please pray with me. Oh God, we thank you that Jesus brought hope into our world. By the good news of the Bible, you are still bringing hope to people. Help us to be ready to welcome Jesus Christ so that we may think good thoughts and do good deeds and so that we, we may be a people of hope in our world. Amen. Thank you so much for doing this for us. Now I invite us into a new song. Um, this is a song that we are going to use through all four of the, uh, of the weeks of Advent. This is a song written by a friend of mine named Richard Brooksworth Colligan. He's a, a psalmist and a singer songwriter in Iowa. And uh, he's going to, his, uh, his song is going to accompany us through the, through the season of Advent. We'll be singing verses, verse one today and then we'll be adding a verse each week until the end of Advent. Um, so Georgina is going to play an introduction. I'm going to sing it through first, and then um, you'll find the words on the screen, and I invite you uh, to sing along uh, if you like. <laughs> Shippers who are with us today to come and join me on the steps.
Hi. It's good to see everybody. Wow, we've got a lot today. This is great. <laughs> so, first of all, I don't know you people. Um, so, um, so, first of all, um, my name is Jacob, and I'm really excited uh, to be your new pastor. Um, and I want to I want to hear what your names are. Can can we go? Can we can you go down the line and tell me what your names are? Why don't you start there in the in the? What was that? Blake. Yeah, good to see you. And you in the gap shirt. What's your name? Taylor, thank you, Taylor. Good to see you. And your name? Jasper? Yeah. Emma? Miles? Yeah. Mava? Liam? Ainsley. Ainsley? Lily. Oh, it's so good to meet you all. I'm really excited to get to know you more as, as time goes on. So today we're talking about we're sort of talking about a gift, um, but uh, we're, we're talking about a lot of things, but one of the things we're talking about is, is a gift. So can anybody tell me what, um, what your favorite present has been that you've ever gotten, anybody? Your dad gave you what? What was that? A dinosaur thing. I love dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah. Who else? Anybody else? Adults can join in on this too. Well, um, so there are, oh, did I see one hand of it there? Okay. Um, so there are all sorts of gifts. Um, that that um, all of us have gotten. Um, I remember. I remember when I got my first iPod. I thought that was so cool. Um, and um, uh, so there are all sorts of gifts. And Jesus is coming. You know, we're, we're talking about Advent. Um, Advent means waiting. We are waiting for Jesus to come. And Jesus uh, is probably the greatest gift that anybody could ever receive, greater than an iPod, greater than even a dinosaur. Um, there, are all, there are all sorts of gifts, but Jesus is greater than any one of those things. And so during this season of Advent, uh, we're going to be waiting for Jesus and praying for Jesus to come into our hearts and into our lives uh, so that uh, Jesus can show us the way to be um, as good people as we can be. So uh, that's, what, that's what Advent means, and that is sort of what we'll be talking about today. So um, I'd like to say a prayer for us, and I will say a short phrase, and I invite you just to repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for all the gifts we've been given. For dinosaurs, for iPods, and all the other things you give us. Help us wait for Jesus and welcome him into our hearts and into our lives. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming up, everybody. One thing I love is you just never you just never know uh, what's going to happen when you ask a kid a question. <laughs> we
We have two scripture readings today. Our first scripture comes from Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem built as a city that is bound firmly together. To it, the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, as was decreed for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. For there were the thrones for judgment were set up, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and security within your towers. For the sake of my relatives and friends, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. The second reading today is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 36 through 44. But about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Creator. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then the two, then two will be in the field. One will be taken and one will be, one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you must also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Here end the readings for today. May God bless us as we learn from these holy words. Amen. My friends, will you join me in prayer? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts in this hour be acceptable to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So every day this week, when I've come to the office to work, I've been filled with hope and expectation at the new things God is doing both in my life and in the life of this congregation. On Monday morning, my first day as your pastor, I awoke in my new bed, in my new house, and was excited to meet new people, learn new things, and work with a new church. As I was getting ready to work, I was reminded of my journey of getting to this moment. What just happened? <laughs> you just never know, do you? Thank you, Becky. Hopefully it'll stay with you. So as I was saying, <laughs> as I was getting ready for work, I was reminded of my journey of getting to this moment. In some ways, my journey with this congregation came when I least expected it. The Associate Conference Minister, Jane Anderson, called me on a Saturday morning in July 
to tell me about the pastoral position at this church. I was just getting ready to go out the door to a party for my aunt. We were literally five minutes away from leaving, and she said, is this a good time? And I was a bit frazzled, and I actually thought I might be in trouble. It was just so strange that I was getting a call on a Saturday morning from a minister, really? As I stand here with you today, I am so glad that I took the time to answer her phone call. Well, I know you're short on time, so I'll keep this short. There's this really great congregation in Wapan looking for a pastor. Just lovely people. I think you should apply. Then Jane sent my profile to your search committee, and just three days later, I got an email request from Kathy and Jeff asking for an interview. Things unfolded pretty quickly for us after that, and it involved some pretty important discernment on both sides. The rest, as they say, is history, but it feels wonderful to know that something as unexpected as this can lead to something this good. Now, I don't do this every week, but today I found pieces of both scripture passages I wanted to bring forth for us. But here's the theme I'd like for us to consider. And if you take nothing away from this sermon, I want it to be this. God has gathered us together in a new relationship. We now await the coming of Christ, who will reveal himself to us in ways we can't imagine. So I'll trace that theme throughout the rest of my message. So it strikes me that on the first day of our worshiping together as pastor and people, our scripture starts out with these words, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Indeed, God has brought us together for such a time as this, and I'm so excited. I'm so excited because of all the new opportunities we have together, all the conversations we'll have, the things we'll learn, and the ways our faith will be deepened because we are together. And we even uh, might uh, deal with some unforeseen happening in worship, like some decorative piece uh, falling down. And we'll go with it, right? Because that's what we do. Additionally, the psalmist calls their listeners and readers to pray for the peace and prosperity of Jerusalem. Part of our project is to not only pray for peace and prosperity within Union Congregational Church and the wider church, but to actually make it so. We are called to seek the good to that which we are entrusted. That might manifest in treating our siblings in Christ with kindness, setting aside our own agendas for the goodness of all. It might look like tending to the needs of our wider community, putting our money where our mouth is, and even going beyond that. Our second text might give us a more concrete directive. In Matthew's gospel, the way we can work towards the realm of God is to always be ready. In biblical times, they didn't know when Jesus would come. They lived in desperate times where they were controlled by greedy, rich rulers. They were told that Jesus was going to come and turn the world upside down. They didn't know when he would arrive, but their directive was to remain vigilant. The biblical directive is stark and carries a tone of warning. It could be interpreted as talking about the rapture, and that would be a biblical way to think about this. But where my spirit is leading me this week, 
is to reframe this text into something that is much more helpful. We have a designated time that we celebrate the birth of Jesus, and perhaps the part about not knowing when Jesus will come doesn't necessarily resonate with us on first glance, but the sentiment continues to be relevant. Jesus is coming into our hearts, into our world once again in a new way. How will we respond? My friends, I believe that we respond by embracing the unexpected. Advent is a season where we can give thanks for the gift of Jesus Christ, which was far greater than anything we could expect or imagine. He gave his followers a model for living according to God's desires and served as their advocate in an unjust world. In several ways, my call to this congregation showed itself in ways I could not expect. When Jane called me on that summer Saturday, I had no idea this church existed. And I really had no idea how much you all would support me. People have already given me rides to and from church on short notice, and I've been, and, and I've been so thankful for that. And people have been so helpful in so many other ways, even in this short time. In a similar way, I wonder what unexpected gifts you can point to in your life. Perhaps it was a blessing that came out of a difficult time. Perhaps it's been watching the growth of your family, your kids, your grandkids, grow into beautiful reminders of God's presence in your life. As you move into this week and into the season of Advent, may you remember those unexpected gifts with gratitude. But God asks something deeper of us than simply remembering the gifts that we've received. The birth of the Christ child can't be just going through the motions every year. It's too important for that. God asks us to continue being ready for our lives to be changed by the gift of Jesus. Following Jesus, after all, is far from an easy task. It requires us to say yes to some things and no to others, even when it may be unpopular. It requires us to work towards the realization of something bigger than ourselves. It requires us to lead a life that's full of prayer, worship, and discernment, even as our society prefers living lives that give us instant gratification or give us the things that we want. But there's something beautiful in waiting for this unexpected gift of Christ, who will show us how to live and be in relationship with one another, and with the God who made us. So, as you enter this season, be ready for your life to change into something new and beautiful. Stay vigilant. Stay alert. Be ready for a child who will turn your world and the life as you know it upside down receiving and sharing Jesus's revolutionary love is the greatest gift we can receive. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join us in our next hymn. This is number 154, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Please rise if it's comfortable for you to do so.
Please be seated. We now enter into a time of more focused prayer. Um, after each uh, prayer petition, I will say, God, in your mercy, and I invite you to respond if you like. Receive our prayer. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Um, I, um, I will, th there is a prayer that I was given, um, and as, um, as, uh, as I'm saying that prayer, um, media team, could we get a, um, could we maybe get a handheld mic um, so that if people um, have, um, have prayers to, to live that we can um, bring the mic around to them. So um, I got this prayer, this prayer request um, a couple of days ago from Sandra Champion. Uh, Lisa Roth um, is recovering from a fall at home uh, and uh, is having a bit of a difficult time. So for Lisa, God in your mercy, receive our prayer. What other prayers do we have today? Light prayer day today, I think. Oh, there's one. Yeah. Hi, I would just like to um, say a prayer for the many people that are lonely, especially during the holidays, yes. to remember them and reach out. Yes, yes, indeed. Um, and just adding something to that, um, on Wednesday, December 21st, the, um, the winter solstice, um, I will be... Um, leading a service, uh, a blue Christmas service. Um, and um, that, that uh, a blue Christmas service is intentionally to um, uh, give a space for, uh, for grief and uh, loneliness in, for, for people for whom this time is not the most wonderful time of the year. Um, so um, if that's you, uh, that'll be Wednesday the 21st at seven o'clock uh, right here in this sanctuary. So for all those who are lonely or um, in need of an extra portion of God's love and grace in this season, God in your mercy, receive our prayer. Anything else today? And I invite us into a time of silent prayer. God of hope, I give you thanks that we are gathered together today for this first time as pastor and people. I'm so excited for the new hope that you bring to this church and to the world because we are together. I give you thanks for uh, the opportunity to serve uh, these lovely people. Um, and I also recognize that uh, we come today with uh, several prayers of our hearts um, for, for Lisa as she recovers from a fall and uh, for all of those who are lonely um, or sad or in uh, need of your love in this season. Give them an extra portion of your love and grace when they need it most. Help us uh, remember those uh, who are um, facing food insecurity, experiencing homelessness, uh, caught in unjust social systems, and otherwise um, feeling, uh, feeling that they need a little bit more of um, your care in, in their lives. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who is with us and the one who is to come, who taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen we now uh take uh, time to offer um, the many gifts in the many different forms uh, that we have them, whether, um, whether gifts of uh, time, talent, treasure, or prayer. Uh, we are so thankful for the many ways that uh, we can return our gifts uh, back to God. Um, please give generously as, uh, as your spirit allows you to do. join me in the prayer of dedication. For the wondrous ways this offering will bless this community, we dedicate these gifts. For the ways it will help us live out God's mission, we dedicate these gifts. Let these gifts strengthen our call to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly. Amen. So our final hymn, um, I, um, I want to offer a little bit of a word of introduction. Um, so this is a hymn called People Look East. Um, it's familiar to some people and less familiar to others. Um, uh, I am going to um, ask that um, the media team not mute my microphone uh, for this hymn, uh, just in case uh, you all haven't sung it before. At least, um, at least I have, and somebody, um, and sometimes somebody leading you through uh, a hymn for the first time uh, might be helpful. So I will, um, I will sing the first verse nice and nice and clearly. And if you know it, you're welcome to sing along with me. And then maybe for verses two, three, and four, um, you'll, you, you might feel more comfortable uh, singing uh, with us. So this is People Look East.
receive these words of benediction. Go forth with the gift of hope, guiding you toward the path of peace. Go forth with the gift of joy, guiding you toward the path of love. Go forth with anticipation, trusting that God will bless and keep you, God's face will shine upon you, and God's grace will never leave you. Now may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Go in peace. Amen.